Welcome from Baylor College of Medicine. I'm Mohammed Ahmed, Professor of Medicine at Baylor College of Medicine. And Tara Kehunian, Assistant Professor at Baylor College of Medicine. And today we are going to discuss our recently accepted manuscript to GIE titled Safety and Efficacy of a Novel Suturing Device for Closure of Large Defects After Endoscopic Submucosal Dissection. So, Dr. Ahmed, as the PI of this study, what made you come up with the idea of this study? Thanks, Dr. Kehanian. Uh, honestly, we do a, a large volume of ESD, and uh, the majority of our patients are referred uh, from a uh, radius area of 100 to 200 miles out of the Houston Medical Center. Um, so we tend to do closure for most of our patients to prevent bleeding or post syndrome, or even delayed perforation, particularly in colorectal lesions. Uh, and you can get by by doing that with clips in majority of cases. However, for larger lesions, lesions that's really in tough locations, you might require suturing. So we do suturing for them, for some of the ESD patients. However, the standard suturing device, uh, as you know, requires double channel endoscope from one single manufacturer. And um, unfortunately, in our unit, we had a totally different manufacturer. So every time we needed to suture, you had to get particularly this tower from this one single manufacturer, put it in the room, which add another 15 to 20 minutes to the procedure. In 2018, a novel suturing device, uh, SX, uh, the one we used in the study, was approved. And one of the uh, interesting facts about that device is that it is utilizing only single channel endoscope from any manufacturer. So for us, this was an opportunity to try this novel suturing device to see how to expedite ESD and see how effective closure using suturing device will, uh, will do for the outcomes of these uh, complex uh, large ESD lesions. Uh, and that's what take me to talk to you, Dr. Kehanian, since you are the first author uh, of this study about the methodology. How did we design this? Study? Sure. This is a prospective single center study that was performed at Baylor College of Medicine. Any patients that was referred for ESD at our institution were screened actually for initial enrollment. Our inclusion criteria entailed any uh, the defect size that was three centimeter or larger and also occupying 50% or larger of the GI lumen. So as you can see, the designer study to actually to deal with large defects, challenging defects, and the defects that are not easily manageable with closure with clips. And honestly, because we use this uh, criteria of at least 50% of the circumference, that was large, for example, in areas of the, like rectum. And at the end, when we looked at our results, what was our mean surface area of defects? Uh, our mean defect size was actually 5.4 centimeter with a standard deviation of 2.5 centimeters. So really large defects for the GI tract. Mm -hmm. Hania, can you tell us more about the results and outcomes of the study? Sure. So in this study, we tried to separate technical and clinical success. So technical success was defined as actually able to attempt the closure with over stitch SX, and technical um, success was achieved in 94% of the cases. And clinical success, which was defined as actually to be able to close 90% or higher of the resection bed, that was achieved in 91% of our patients. Yeah, so can you tell us more about the lesions that we could not close, the failure cases, and why we had this failure? So one of the failure cases was the cinch malfunction. So mm -hmm. we were able to actually perform the suturing gap, but we were not able to deploy the cinch. Mm -hmm. Another one was actually as a case of a gastric case that during the suturing, due to the actually very like a maneuvering and torquing of the scope, the distal tip of the suturing device got dislodged from the tip of the scope. And the last case that uh, we um, encountered any issues was actually a rectal lesion, that closing the lesion 100% or even like close to 90% would have resulted to actually involving closure of the anal canal. So we decided intentionally not to proceed with that. I want to a little bit, if you don't mind, talk about some of the tips and tricks. Yes, yeah. that was actually my follow-up question. I know that you encountered like, like uh, these cases was actually the first human experience in the United States. So if you can share your tips and tricks would be very useful. Yeah, so for, for our uh, uh, listener who have been using uh, the system that require double channel endoscope, uh, it's more a stable system and you put everything within the endoscope channel. 
So the way you work with it is totally different than when you use a single channel and then you will have tubes outside. And I would like to give some advice about how to use it. One of them is that, number one, when you are setting up the device, that tubes, there are plastic sheets outside the endoscopes, you have to make sure they are not kinked. And how you make sure they are not kinked? Before you set them up over the endoscope, you have to pass your um, uh, anchor and your tissue helix in the two channels from the beginning to keep these channels straight and strong enough so that they don't get kinked. Once you set up the endoscope, you want to make sure that the distal part is really um, uh, attached to the end of the scope. So sometimes I was adding additional uh, maybe uh, tape around the end to make sure that the end is stable. The other thing we noticed too that because you can use uh, the, uh, the device, the tissue helix, in both locations, either in the channel of the SX or within the endoscope channel, now you have two locations to put the tissue helix in, which allows you to really grab the tissue from anywhere you want. So we felt that the best way to suture with this new device is to use the tissue helix every time. So Dr. Kehanian, can you tell us more about the adverse events we encountered in this study? Sure. Before I actually talk about adverse events, I want to mention that with using this device for closing such large lesions, we were able to actually to achieve secondary discharge in almost 78% of our patients. Uh, we didn't encounter any ma major adverse events. One patient had delayed bleeding, which was self-resolving and did not require any endoscopic interventions. Because we were dealing with such large lesions, we had seven patients who had um, rectal pain after the rectal ESD for the first 48 hours, and we had one patient with dysphagia for a very short period of time after the procedure. And one patient developed rectal strictures that was uh, uh, receiving serial dilation. So Dr. Ottman, what do you think uh, the implications of this study would be? I think uh, this study would add to the literature about the importance of closure after ESD. In our goal to Americanize ESD, I think we have more focus specifically in chronic ESD on traction devices, stabilization devices, and better closure devices. To conclude, we would like to thank GIE for this opportunity and we hope you will find this study beneficial in your practice.